have Marisha Kellen, the Vice Chair of Pennsylvania Film Industry Association, and we have amazing guests today that you have all been looking forward to, Diane Heary and Jason Loftus from Heary Loftus Casting. And Diane and Jason have opened so many doors to so many actors. I mean, I am one of them. You helped me get my SAG card. So you are fantastic. And we are so grateful to you, not just for this webinar, but for all the lives that you have changed along in your career. So let's start with all the burning questions that have been sent to us. And the first one is about training. So is training a must for the aspiring actors? And do you expect experienced actors to continue training even after they started working full time? Yes, and yes, <laughs> uh, really. I mean, it's, it, the, the training is, is part of all, any, anything. It's like you can't say, oh, I'm a brain surgeon and, and not have gone to medical school. And I think it's important that you, you get your training and you, and you really learn the craft from the ground up. There's a load, load of people who have, you know, just innate talent, which is great, but you need to hone that talent and focus it. And, and training is a big part of that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, the right kind of training is invaluable. Um, it's just like anything. If you um, are taking training which doesn't challenge you, um, it could, it's almost like going to the gym and not doing anything. Um, you need, you know, varied good training, which is, which various different things, improv, um, you know, and we, like we recommend to people, we, we tell acting students all the time is to, you know, try different acting teachers. You don't have to go to the same one forever. Right. Um, but um, training is invaluable. We can tell in the first two or three minutes of a person coming into a room, um, whether they've had training or not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the, you know, here's the thing, training is invaluable, but here's the funny thing about our business today is um, there's a, the, as a lot of people, are, as you watch movies, there's a big push for realism. Um, and that's oftentimes why you'll see even for pretty big roles, you know, a lot of directors are like, oh, that's a, that role's a cop. Get me a real cop. Um, get me, you know, we've even had directors go, um, oh, we, this person's a barista. Well, get me a real barista. You know, that kind of thing. Um, so um, training is, is invaluable, um, but it isn't the end all. There's a lot of avenues where people do their own training, where they they do TikTok, YouTube videos, right. um, you know, all kinds of things. But, you know, when you're talking, um, you know, being a professional actor, usually a professional actor has, has had some baseline of training. Mm -hmm. And it's important even as, as a seasoned actor to stay in tune with it. It's, it's like, oh, you're not going to be in the Olympics and not having trained for it. And then if you're off for two years, you can't go right back to the Olympics again. You need to stay in training. And, and especially in this industry, if you look at a movie made in the 80s, there's loads of times we'll look at that movie and we kind of laugh because the acting style looks so much different than what we're looking at today. And if you're a seasoned actor and you're still giving, you know, and your auditions, you're still delivering what you did 25 years ago, you're out of touch with what the industry is needing today. So it's important that you stay trained to stay up to date with what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, is there a difference between uh, how you see uh, actors from acting schools, actually, who completed uh, the full uh, uh, university study or just workshops, casting agencies, trainings, private lessons? Is there one or another that you suggest? Well, it's, it really comes down to um, good training and um, valuable training. You want to train from someone who has validity in what they're training you. Um, you know, what happens is, and this is, you know, something it is, a lot of times, a lot of actors who are out of work and aren't, aren't working very much, all of a sudden they're like, well, I'll just teach an acting class. And that sometimes is disastrous for the people who take the class because again, there is, there is a certain way um, that trained professionals 
know how to train people and um, take you through the different disciplines and um, all of that thing. So, you know, like even in your question, like um, there are some four-year colleges, which you graduate out of their, their theater program mm -hmm. or their film and TV program and their stellar programs. Um, you come out ready to work. Um, most of them are yeah. not. Yeah, a lot of them don't train their actors to, to be a working professional. They're training them in acting, but they still aren't giving them a focus of what the professional world is asking of them. But it really does depend on what the individual actor needs. So some actors, you know, they're really good and they find, oh, I'm, I'm gonna just take a couple workshops here and there, which are okay to get yourself started. But a, a starting workshop is exactly that. You know, you need ongoing training, you need to be, you know, stay in touch with what's going on in the industry. So you need, it, it, it really is buyer beware in that business. Let's, let's be honest, because there's loads of people who hang out a shingle saying they're an acting teacher and they're not very experienced or they're, you know, they're just not that good. So you need to understand, you know, look to who they're also teaching and how they're teaching and, you know, just check their validity because there, you can take acting classes from some, you know, an acting school, you can go to a college, you can go to seminars. There's all these different places to go. You just need to do your research on who these people are and make sure they fit you that there's there's a good line of communication because some acting teachers are fabulous but maybe they just don't work for you personally and that's an important fact that you have to look at as well i mean it should be challenging you should feel like the other people in your class um, are people that maybe you think are better than you mm -hmm. um, if you feel like you're so much better than everyone else in the class and everyone's a beginner and you're a little bit further along it's not really doing you a whole lot of good and the i mean as an actor you know one of the most important things um that actors learn as you go along is in this business a lot of the businesses revolve around taking money from actors headshots acting schools um even some agents so they look at you as the talent as the mark they look at you as the person um, who gives them revenue, um, you know, and if, you know, and you as the talent need to be able to look at each situation and decide which one actually helps you get to the next step. And you're not just helping that person pay their own rent. And a lot of times, you know, um, you know, training is kind of put into the guys of you know oh we're we're doing scenes and we're going to shoot our own movie all those things are good but if if that's all you're doing and you're not learning the you know the you know the fundamentals of being on camera or you know just the basic fundamentals of acting you're you're not really it's not really helping you um yeah, yeah it's just important that you really do your research on who the who you're going to before you jump in with any checkbook yeah Thank you for bringing up the red flags to look out for. Uh, now, what is the best way to prepare for an audition? Ooh, it depends on the audition, yeah. what, what it is. Research, well, honest to God, it, just, just for instance, you really need to do all your research as, po as much as possible. So if you get an audition for say, Law & Order, now today, there is no excuse anywhere on this planet that you have, if you've never seen an episode of Law and & Order. And Law & Order has a very specific style and of how the, the show is done. So you need to know that before you go in for that audition for Law & Order so that you're doing that style. And if you haven't done that research, then they're gonna laugh you out of the room. But if you've never, like if it's a brand new show and you don't know the style, well then you, do, you have to dig a little deeper. Who's the director? You know, what, what's the director done in the past? What's his style? What's, what's their outlook on how they want things done? Because, and you know, and the internet is there for, for the grabs. You should use it to your, you know, to your greatest advantage. And the more information you have, the more you're gonna know of how to prepare for that audition. You know, is it a wild and crack, you know, crazy, you know, comedy? Is it a drama? Is it, you know, is it a mix of both? And, and if there are no stupid questions before an audition, especially if it's a brand new show you've never seen before, 
and you're just sent two pages on sides, you don't know. Or one line. Right. You don't, is it a comedy? Is it a drama? How do I approach this? It's okay to ask those questions, but it's really important that you, you know, that you, you do your homework and do the research on everybody involved in the project to get as much information. Who else is starring in it? You know, that, who's the writer? I mean, all those little things are going to really help inform you to what you're going to do in your actual audition. And the bare bones of it is if you are given copy ahead of time and you don't know it when you, before you go in, <clears throat> I know there's a big thing in the world of, of, you know, do I have to memorize this or, you know, my advice to every actor is memorize it as best you can. We don't care if you have, you have it in your hand, the copy in your hand, but you should know that copy. Cause if you come in and a lot of, we've had a lot of people treat, film and TV auditions like a true cold read for theater um, where they're just reading off the page and they're just, you know, every once in a while looking up um, almost like a table read. They don't consider that an audition and probably we, we're going to burn your audition, meaning we're going to delete it from what the director is going to be able to see. Um, you know, we want to see professionals. We want to see that you know the material, you've got it down you have your questions, you've made your choices, choices of what you want to do in, you know, um, you know, and that's something very simple on your end, on the talent's end is just know the material. And the additional research that Diane's talking about could be the difference between auditioning for an end night Shyamalan movie or auditioning for David O. Russell, a David O. Russell project, which, which, it, it, the this acting styles are a little different. Um, and, you know, the argument is, to, you know, it, depending on what you're doing, but um, you should be aware that that's this particular director likes that style. Right. Um, and, you know, that's what we're, that's also what we're for is that we try to funnel your performance closer to what they, um, through our conversations with directors, producers, what they're, mm -hmm. what you're looking for. But, um, it always, it always feels to Diane and I when a person who is prepared walks through the door, they know their copy, they know the questions they want to ask. Um, that competence is unique in this world. Yeah, it's, and it seems like a no brainer to say to be prepared for an audition, but it's scary to say that maybe a third of every actor who comes to an an audition is not ready. They haven't done that homework or they're just kind of like phoning it in. And that's kind of a sad thing to say. And the unfortunate thing is, you know, you only get a couple chances. And, and here's, here's a, a tough thing to say to actors. Everybody thinks you're special. And, you know, grandma said you're special, but you're not. And, and we've never had a part in a movie that went uncast. We found somebody. And if you're not ready and want to be ready, just step aside because there's 10 people standing behind you. And you have to always keep that in mind. That there's always somebody else behind you wanting that spot. So if you're not ready, you know. Well, it's, it's, it's realizing as an actor that unfortunately, a lot of this is competitive. Um, and, you know, it's, you're trying to find the right person which fits into the role and, you know, it's all in the mindset. So we, it's interesting when you talk to actors, what, how some of them are real competitive. Mm -hmm. They show up and they know, I know who I'm reading against, right? Or I know, and I'm, I'm, I know I got to bring my A game because this person's really good. There's other people that motivate themselves in different ways. But, um, you know, I think it's the biggest thing for the actor to really know as far as being prepared and, and coming in is first off, you won half the battle. We think you're good enough to come in and read for it. Mm -hmm. That should give people confidence. And as a casting director, we want you to be confident. We don't want you to not feel comfortable. Um, you know, listen, we have our bad days where we're dealing with different things, but at the same time, you know, we want, it's a partnership between us and the talent. And one thing I can tell you is Diane and I are prepared. So we would appreciate it. And, and our friends in New York and LA tell us the same thing. 
when people are prepared, it is, you are just about at the finish line. The other thing to remember though is no audition is ever a wasted audition because you may not get that part, but there's something else that may tag on that down the line or the director goes, oh, I remember him for the audition and now we're adding a new role, just book him. Or even, you know, like when we've done a TV show, you know, somebody auditioned for episode one and then come episode 10, we get a phone call, say, hey, remember that guy from episode one? We should, we should just put him in. And you're, you're going to get remembered and it's, or it's going to get you in the room for another audition. Well, we, you and know, so you, you, you can't just phone them in. Prime example of that would be, you know, most recently dispatches from elsewhere. We went in, we hadn't met them yet in person. We'd have all phone conversations with them. And we did the first round of auditions. We went in and sat down with the producers and they were, they loved our local, loved local talent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the producers came up to us with a list of people they loved and the roles they wanted them to audition it when for the rest of the episodes. Yeah. So, I mean, Diane couldn't be more right. Is that, you know, it, one audition leads to another always one way or another, sometimes directly where the producer's like, Oh, you know what that person read for, you know, you know, the bartender, you know what, they'd be really good at this down the road. And they made a list. And honestly, on that producer's list, almost everyone that they pulled out, they pulled and put other places in the show. Wow. And maybe, maybe not even on that particular project, but it could be, you know, David a, Russell. a year down the road, David O. Russell. Yes. He did that. He brought, so after he did Silver Linings Playbook here in Philadelphia, he brought three of the actors from Philadelphia to a movie he was shooting in Boston. He just remembered them. So, you know, and, and that's an important thing. So no auditions wasted. So, you, you know, just, you got to own it. Was that too much of a long answer? We told, we <laughs> warned you, Maria. That was we inspiring. That was very moving. Everybody's now preparing. <laughs> and wow. Yeah, that's great. Now, and I'm glad you brought up being remembered uh, because that leads us to the next question of what's the best way to be remembered and what are some do's and don'ts at the audition? Well, the, the best way is, you know, we've already kind of touched on it, is mm -hmm. be competent and, um, you know, be prepared. And all those things are, you know, you know, are, are simple little things mm -hmm. that, that will keep you coming through our door. Um, respect the moment, you know, it's, you know, listen, it, people spend their whole lives and just people who moved to LA and people were all lucky enough to do this here. Thank God for the film tax credit. But that, you know, um, you know, the big deal is, you know, people, you know, do this their whole lives for just one chance to say lines in a movie, a big time movie. And the people who come in and just completely disrespect the moment and waste time are really being disrespectful to the thousands of other actors that work every day for that moment. And we're not perfect. There's been times where we've called in the wrong person mm -hmm. and you know, that, that not respecting the moment and respecting themselves is what the truth of it is, um, is a, probably the biggest don't. Mm -hmm. um, there's little things that, you know, we could probably give you yeah, anecdotes. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, being prepared, prompt, prepared, professional, you know, the three P's, if nothing else. Um, you know, the people who, because sometimes, sometimes people are being brought in and they may not be the right person for the role. And let me just sidebar that for a second. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> because there's loads of times we'll get a breakdown and, and the director says, no, I really see this role as, you know, a white guy in his fifties being this and that. And in a way it's our job to shake the tree to say, no, wait a minute. You know what? I really think this woman would be really good in that role. And she has a better, you know, I think she's a different look on things, or maybe we go with them, you know, an African-American person here. Or we try and to, to change their mind a little bit. And, more often than not, we've been successful. We, we put in somebody who you know, is that wild card, who's not exactly what they were looking for. And it, it makes the director look at the role a little differently and go, huh, I never, then that would work. And I like that. And, and that happens a lot. So as an actor though, you get that audition and you read the script and you go, 
well, this says it's for a man. Why should I be? This is wrong. I'm a woman. You got it. You got to trust. Uh, trust the process. You have to. You have to understand that. Well, no, there's something there that we're seeing you in that role, mm -hmm. and you, you need to go for it because and just own it mm -hmm. as it is and see what happens because that happens a lot, and and you can't you can't let that that time float away from yourself. And it's really one of our hallmarks. Um, you know, one of something that we pride ourselves on is um, giving options to the director that are out of type. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, they pick the talent that's out of type. And a lot of times that's people of color, that's meant, you know, putting a male role in, where, if, you know, female, just depending, mm -hmm. or uh, the opposite. And um, they want to make those decisions. They want to, but sometimes when they're in the middle of writing a script and the writers, they just are like, okay, that this is a white guy, you know, or this is a, and, you know, it's kind of our job to help populate that world. And it's something, you know, that we're lucky in Philadelphia is this is such a diverse city um, that we have been very fortunate and very been successful for us in doing that with um, productions. And um yeah. So back to your question about do's and don'ts. We'll, talk, we'll we're just going to go around the world. Come but back. anyway, but but like coming into the audition, it's like, yeah, you need to come on time, and that sounds like a stupid thing to say and ridiculous, but it's a big deal. You know, we had one one director who uh, like a, like three of the people came late for their appointment time, and this director, a, a fairly big name director, who I won't name, but he left the studio, went out into the lobby and tore into the actors who were late wow. and how dare you come late and why are you doing you you want to be a professional in this business and he just like it was, laid it, it out it was surreal because they were so happy that the director who's known was talking to them but also being reamed out at the same time it was quite it was brutal it was quite a but uh, you know, so he said you know he said you know, you know you want to be part of this business well then show that you want to be here and you know and respect your time respect everybody's time it was it was an interesting time the best was is i could be looking at location pictures <laughs> so it was these yelling out. but so i mean so you know it's like you know, you know coming prepared you know doing your research coming on time and 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 coming in and and owning what you're doing and enjoying it i mean it's it's a it's a tough process and it can be scary but also consider the odds of this industry where odds are you're going to for every 10 auditions you do if you book one you're doing well you know or even you know out of 100 auditions you're sometimes an unbelievable success so that's that's a big deal so you you're going to be doing more auditions than you're going to be doing jobs mm -hmm. so you should start enjoying the audition process because that's part of the life and and it should be there's a learning experience to that of, you know, what did I do right today? What did I do wrong today? How can I fix it? But, you know, just understanding the whole process of what you're going through, that's a big deal. And, and a lot of actors lose sight of that because they're all about, I just want to book this job, but you can't book every job. So you go in thinking, well, but this audition might lead to another job somewhere else. Yeah. What, one, one thing that we've watched a lot over the years is, is, the countless talent that we're bringing in for roles here um, that, you know, book little things with us or, you know, whatever, because we do all different kinds of roles. I, I don't use, I don't like to use the word little, but it's true. I mean, some, sometimes it's one word, sometimes it's one line, sometimes it's four pages. It just depends on what the person does, but we've dealt with so much talent over the years that have used what they've gotten from the Philadelphia market. Um, and we know so many people in Pittsburgh who had, uh, used it as a springboard to take mm -hmm. them into New York or LA. And we've, we've seen, you know, some real success stories of people who treat this understanding it's a business of rejection, understanding mm -hmm. it's a business of most, you don't get most auditions and treating it all like a ladder. Mm -hmm. And, it's the healthiest way to look at this because we, I see it and I say it to Diane a lot. It's, it's, you know, this is not easy for, for on the actor side. They, 
are auditioning and a lot of times they don't really fully understand how they did. It's hard for us to give feedback um, because sometimes the reason why they're not chosen is the other person in the scene has brown hair. Mm -hmm. They look too much like the lead. They're too tall. They're, oh, wait, how tall are they? They're 6'3"? Oh, well, our, our, our lead is 5'9". You know, it, there's yeah. so many reasons why um, talent doesn't book um, to go along with, you know, the re normal reasons you would think mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, it's such a difficult um, life to kind of lead mm -hmm. that, you know, we found that the most, the people who are the most successful at it, you know, you treat it just this begets this opportunity, one rung on the ladder, grab it, you go up. You don't expect to go to jump from the bottom of the ladder to the top. There are people who do that and we should all be happy for them. Um, but it's, you know, it's very much a grind. Um, and actually almost every position that you work on in TV and film commercials, wherever, it's a grind for that person to be where they are. For that person to become the director, they grind it mostly, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, that's probably, you know, one of the biggest things, you right. know, we can really say for actors and, you know, as far as, you know, I don't even know where we started and how we ended <laughs> up here, but the, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the, uh, one of the amazing things to watch. That's, that's wonderful. That, that is also inspiring that uh, you see this growth in people who just started maybe with the one. I mean, we've seen people come in who, it's just like you're talking about like experience level. Mm -hmm. We had people we met who, one, you know, woman, um, you know, I want to say her name, okay. but she started, she started on Creed mm -hmm. doing background work mm -hmm. and she had no idea what this business was just was was has been a mother her kids were in high school and she was had all this free time and she was like oh i'll just be an extra well then then we were like sorry we like oh you know what we have a commercial you might be right for we brought her in she booked it then it led to her thinking you know what do i need to do i need to take classes she found someone locally she's been taking classes and she has progressed to the point where she's auditioning for tv and film in new york yeah. you know it it happens you know, and it, it's, it's something that, um, you know, isn't something that's out of reach. It's just, you know, it, it's something you have to work at. Yeah. Persistence. Yeah. 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 Hard work and dedication indeed. So what are three pieces of advice you'd like to leave our viewers with? Something that you've learned along this journey. Don't waste a day. Mm -hmm. Um, be and because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. And, and, and that was a, a personal thing I had to learn for myself. I was in high school and college, an incredible procrastinator. Yeah, I'll write that paper tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do that. But I've since learned that I do everything, I, I don't put off till tomorrow because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So if, if I need to get, you know, these things done, so I'm free for whatever tomorrow will bring, then I'll do that. And hey, if tomorrow brings nothing, well, then I get a day off to go to the park. But I think that's, that's a big thing of like, don't put off anything. And it's like, oh, well, you know, you wanted to get new headshots. Well, everybody says, I'm going to lose 10 pounds first before I get new headshots. You'll never lose those 10 pounds. Just take the damn headshots. Not to be negative. That's like, that's let's be just serious. say, it. let's just be honest. So it's like, yeah, but you in the, in that six months it's going to take you to lose those 10 pounds. You just lost six months of possible bookings because you didn't have good headshots. So go for it and then do them again when you do lose those 10 pounds. But it's, I think that's a big deal of don't put off anything. Don't procrastinate. You know, it's like, Oh, I've always wanted to learn to ride a bicycle. Well, yeah, because how many times have we on a commercial, we need somebody who knows how to ride a bicycle. And you don't, you, you can't learn how that in a day, but if you had started practicing a couple of years ago, you'd be ready for that commercial or whatever. And that, that was, a, that was for myself, a big deal of, no, I'm going to do it today because I don't know what I'll have, something else is going to blow up tomorrow. So I'll have other stuff done and we're ready. That was a big learning 
learning curve for myself. It's something that we've, you know, that, you know, she brought to our business and, you know, taught me is that we do that in our business. When something comes in, we do it now. And there is no holding off. We, we don't have a secretary who screens our calls. We, we answer the phone as it comes in, you know, all of those kind of things. And, you know, those are things that, you know, we think that a lot of people don't do, but, um, you know, I guess in, in something that I've picked up and learned in, in this business was, is you know, I started as an actor, you know, had moderate success <clears throat> and, um, you know, what, I really have learned now at 45 years old, which I wish I would have known when I was 20, is there's something about human condition, and especially with actors, is, well, you know, well, I need to be like that. Oh, I see this successful actor. So I need to be like that. You know, I need to work on my body so I look like that. I need to... um, Sorry, I, you know, I need to be someone else. I, there, there's, I need to do something special with my hair. I need to do whatever it may be. What, what I have learned is it doesn't matter. What matters is people and this business responds to people who become comfortable in their own skin. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a tough lesson for people because it, it takes us all a long time, but the people who, you know, you know, he, I don't know if you would mind me saying, but you know, I mean, you know, there's, we have an actor in town who's very successful. He's a big guy. He's very tall. He's a big gentleman. And he's, he's so comfortable in his skin that he can do anything. You can just buy him doing anything. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that would be something, you know, of, three things that I could want to just wish I could tell actors that I could give them, especially to young women that we see that put so much pressure on themselves when they come in, they're in the, in the bathroom before their audition for 45 minutes, you know, putting on the perfect makeup. And I understand that's an important part. And I, and it's hard for me to, you know, fully comment on these kinds of things, Mm -hmm. but you know, you, you just being comfortable as you, is going to work for you more than you trying to be someone else. It, it never works. And in our business now where everything is so reality driven in all storytelling um, that, you know, there is no perfect size anymore. It, it's not 1985. You don't have to be blonde and size zero. You don't have to be, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You don't have to be those things. You can be anything. In fact, we want people as you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, without going too far into that, I mean, without being, it's something that, you know, is really kind of, was kind of eye opening for me to learn over the years that the people who are just kind of like, this is who I am, are the people who always are the most successful. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. And the only (laughs) The only other, the only other thing I could think is, it, it you know, it's it's important for you to be comfortable in your own skin, but also understanding the industry as as the industry is always changing, and information is always power, and it blows my mind when I hear of an actor who had never heard of, you know, this director or had never seen such and such TV show. Like, this is your business. And a lot of directors will direct you making film and TV cultural references. Right. I don't think, sometimes that's a pain, um, but they'll literally, you know, go, oh, do Ferris Bueller it. And that's an easy one, you know, yeah. to talk to, you know, just break the fourth wall. Yeah, or, be Ferris Bueller. Or, or you or know. Give me, you know, it's, I want you to be the little kid with E.T. Or I want you to be like such, such and such. It's important that you're you're educated into the industry of, you know what how people talk, but not just that, but you know read the trade papers. Yeah, reading Variety and Hollywood Reporter, it, I, I read it every day, and loads of times are stuff I will never apply to us. But every once in a while, there's little things that stick in the back of my mind. I go, huh, that's happening. Well, like, if that's happening. Like, this like, might happen. <laughs> like independent producers who've been indicted. 
Well, yes. <laughs> Who call and like, I have a project. I have a project. And we, I remember that name, seeing him in, the, in Variety. It's like, wait a minute. He was just indicted for fraud. Huh. Maybe not this guy. So, but the point is that you need to stay educated and informed in the industry that you want to be in. And, you know, so, you know, it doesn't take me, you know, 10 minutes to skim through the, the trade papers every day. But it's those little, those little things that, that set off. I go, oh, that's an important tidbit I need to know. And, and, and it, it just gives you that little leg up. The more information you have, the more power you will have. And, you know, it's, it's, it's so overused, but it's so true. You know, when, you, when money's involved, you're, you're auditioning for a job that pays money. Understand that it is a business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, the overused is it's not show friends, it's show business. And, you know, understanding that, you know, you need to conduct yourself in a professional manner. One thing that, you know, is so apparent now in days of COVID um, are there are a lot more corporate regulations that go into this, which, you know, we're still having gotten all of them from each production. But, um, you know, this, this is all stuff that's important. And I have to be able to trust you that you are going to be professional and follow whatever protocol they tell you to do. Because at the end of the day, no one's going to be standing outside your door with a gun saying, you can't go anywhere. You need to wear a mask. You need to do this. You need to do that. I need, in production needs, wants you to be a professional, like a business person and understand this is what you do. So, mm -hmm. you know, being, yeah. it's a business, being professional goes a long way. Um, you know, honestly, like we told you, we could talk to you for, <laughs> Some of the, you know, if you ask us questions, we could go and go and go. But yeah, I mean, I think it's just it, it's and and it's it's a wonderful business to be in. It's exciting, and and the nice thing about it is, you really can start on the ladder at any age. It's not like if you're a football player, you once you're thirty years old, you're probably too old to play in the NFL or to get started. You know, so, but you can, you know, lead, you know, be in the business when you're in college and then come to have another career and then come back later on in life. You can stop and start this industry. It's a little tougher sometimes because you have other people who've been in it more full time and they have more, they're more established, but there's always opportunity and, and you just have to be willing to search for the opportunity and, you know, and be open to what's going on. This has been fantastic. We have learned, not only we have learned a lot, but this has been so inspiring and so uplifting. And uh, we really appreciate your positivity, your optimism, and the, all your wonderful words of wisdom towards our actors. And uh, we hope that we're going to see many more amazing movies. <laughs> we appreciate you calling it wisdom. <laughs> No, no, definitely is, definitely is. And thank you very much for your time. We know you're very busy and that's great that you're busy because it's crazy yeah. times. So very happy to hear you're busy. We're happy to hear that more films are coming to uh, Pennsylvania. So thanks a lot. And thank you everyone who's been watching. We've been Diane Heary and Jason Loftus from Heary Loftus Casting. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.